In our last episode, we discovered the homologists of San Francisco and learned that they're trying to get to the planet Quetzal. To do so, they need fuel for their rocket ship. Fuel that the she has. The leader of the Hobologists, AHS-9, also wants us to get rid of the She Emperor. But even if we weren't siding with the Hobologists, we have reasons of our own to visit the She. We need fuel for the PMV Valdez, the tanker that is the only way we can reach the Enclave, whom we learned are on an oil rig in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And so we head northeast to visit the final place here in San Francisco, the Steel Palace. Passing beneath a Chinese archway, we arrive indoors. Doesn't look much like a palace, looks more like a vault. Heading inside, we see a room to the left, but there's nothing in here. So continuing down the hallway, we pass through a deactivated force field to arrive in a large room. We see a man guarding a room to the north, Treat our people with respect, he says. But instead of passing through there, we can open the door to the southwest. Here we find a number of computers and scientists. Talking with the man in the lab coat, May I assist you with something, he asks. Who are you, we can say. I am Dr. Wong. I am the head scientist of this installation. We remember Dr. Wong. We briefly visited him in my video on the oil tanker. He was the guy that had Chip's spleen. If you missed that episode, uh, long story. Well, what do you do here, we can ask. And he says, I oversee the scientific experiments we create and run here. I'm also in charge of the computer network. What are you planning, we can ask. And he says, ah, but if I tell you our plans, then everyone will know. I'm afraid they are secret plans for now. All right, we can say, well, how does one get access to the computer network? And he says, why, one learns how to hack into it, or how to make friends with one of my underlings. I'm joking, of course, about hacking into it. If you were to do that, I'd send someone after you to kill you. He smiles to show he means no offense. But of course, we remember what happened to Badger if we asked him to hack into their network. So, uh, yeah, don't mess with Dr. Wong. Would you really kill me, we can ask. And again, he smiles. We must protect our honor, stranger. So you wouldn't have any real objections to me getting into the computer, we can ask. And he says, if you can convince my subordinates into doing so, but I certainly won't. Talking with the other scientists, excuse me, they say. Mix this, mix that. I get so bored sometimes. Despite Dr. Wong's threats here, we can access the nearby terminal. Station deactivated. We can activate the station. Greetings. Please enter your password to confirm your identity. Despite Dr. Wong's warning, we can try to hack the computer. Chemistry database. Fuel and derivatives. Polymers. We can explore fuel and derivatives. You come across a vast array of complex chemical formulae and lab notes. You are not quite sure what all of this means. Now, if we don't know that we have to get oil for the tanker, our only option here is to direct fuel along pipeline. But we get an error message. Destination required. If, however, we know that we need fuel for the tanker, and if we know that the Humbologists need fuel for their rocket ship, we find two options. We can direct fuel to the Poseidon tanker. This completes our quest. We get the fuel we need, and we can move on to the Enclave. Or, we can direct fuel to the Hobologists. Fuel directed accordingly. Storage tanks empty. Closing program. We'll head back to the Hobologists to learn what this does in just a moment. But continuing to explore the terminal, we find a data entry on polymers. Once we have waded past the symbology and technical discussion, we discover that the Shi are working on a new kind of polymeric combat armor that is resistant to both flame and penetration. It is still years from completion. We also see mention of new weaponry and construction capabilities. Apparently, the Shi have some plans for the future. So, this is what they're working on. But what are their future plans? All the other terminals in this room access the same network, so we don't get any new options by exploring them. There are two desks here, but they're both empty. Heading out, we can move north into the room being guarded. 
but we see that this is a bit of a cafeteria. We find one scientist at lunch for the glory of the Emperor. Right. Guy seems bored with his lot in life. Opening the door in this room, we arrive at the kitchen. No chef here, and the table is empty. We see a door in the eastern wall. This just leads us to a hallway connecting to the big rectangular room we were in just a moment ago. At the end of the hallway, we can turn right down another hallway and open a door in the northern wall. We see a bank of three computers against the eastern wall. Two of them don't do anything, but oddly enough, when we access the third one in this row, we learn that our ham-fisted approach across the keys triggers the correct password. Our luck is incredible. But all we can do is exit. Uh, this doesn't do anything. I'm not sure why it's here. Perhaps it's left over from cut content, but it exists in every installation of Fallout 2. It just doesn't do anything. We see a room to the left filled with a bunch of suspension tanks. There is a bathroom in the southwestern corner, but both of these rooms are empty. Back to the hallway and moving north, we find another bank of computers. Most of these don't function, but we find three more computers here that tell us that our luck is incredible, but have no other purpose. The room to the right, filled with more suspension tanks, is likewise empty, so it looks like this entire section of the Steel Palace is just taking up space. There's nothing to do here. There's not even anything at the end of this hallway. So, retracing our steps, we can move southeast on the hallway to the other section of the Steel Palace. We see a very ornate door in a brick wall? Passing it for now, we can move through a deactivated force field to go through a series of doors to the east to arrive in a room filled with big tanks. This must be where they store the fuel. In this room, we find a number of tables. They're all empty, and despite finding valves on the wall, there is nothing in this room we can interact with. So retracing our steps, we can go back through the doors and then open a door to the south. We arrive in another lab. Most of the scientists here just share the same dialogue. Funnily enough, if we hacked into their computer, even if we didn't move any of the fuel, they know about it. I want revenge on the hackers, says one of the scientists. The man we want to talk to is the white coat standing near to the southeastern wall. Who are you? What do you want, he says. I am Oxhorn, we can say. I'm just looking around. Well, Oxhorn, do you actually have business here, he says. I would like to know what you do here, we can say. And he says, I create compounds and devices for the Emperor and for the Emperor's advisor, Ken Lee. Currently, I'm working on fuel derivatives and polymers that will withstand a massive attack. Of course, this is of no interest to you, since it is, for the most part, theoretical. Now, if we don't know that we need tanker fuel yet, or if we have not been to the Humbologists, our only option here is to say, not yet it's not, but I'll be back. But if we've been to the Valdez and we know we need tanker fuel, we find an option to say, actually, it is of interest. I'd like fuel for the Poseidon oil tanker. And he says, you want fuel for the tanker? I want hardened power armor. I understand a hubologist, one called Crockett, has a process whereby a regular suit of power armor can be upgraded. Get me such a suit, and I will divert the fuel for you. However, if we already use the chemistry terminal to divert the fuel, he instead says, even if I wanted to help you, I could not. Our fuel reserves have been depleted. Perhaps you would be better off asking the hubologists for their help. Goodbye. If we have not diverted the fuel yet, and if we are a hubologist, we find a different option here. We can say, I'm here to obtain fuel for the hubologists. And Jing says, they want fuel, do they? Well, as irritating as they are, they do have their uses. I have heard that they have developed a process wherein they make a suit of power armor even more invincible. If they will upgrade such a suit of armor for me, I'll pass the fuel along the pipeline. I assume it's for their toy spaceship. It is the one called Crockett that you will have to speak with. So he is willing to trade the hardened power armor for fuel for the tanker. Jing here is the subordinate who Wong told us about. And to convince him to give us the fuel, we've got to give him hardened power armor. If we have a suit, we can say, I have one right here. And he says, you have hardened power armor? Excellent. How do you want to be paid? We can sell the suit for 20,000 bucks, in which case he says, so much? Ah, yet for such a powerful suit of armor to study, very well. 
Here's your money. Or, if we have not already diverted the fuel to the tanker, we can either have him directed to the tanker or to the Habologist spaceship. This is yet another way to get the fuel, but it's an expensive way. I need that suit of power armor for my companions. So leaving Jing for now, we'll try to find another way. The scientists are really miffed over being hacked. Someday we'll find out who hacked us. All of the terminals in this horseshoe shape are deactivated. We can't access any information on them. And the three desks nearby are empty. But the three terminals against the eastern wall are accessible. But these access the chemistry databases, just like the terminals in the other lab. So we find nothing new here. Opening the southeastern door, we arrive in a barracks, lots of bunk beds and a table. And opening the last door in this room, we arrive in an observation room where the scientists can overlook the fuel tanks. But this is a dead end. This leaves one place left to explore. Retracing our steps back to the big rectangular room in the middle of the palace, we can move north to open the ornate door in the brick wall. Don't try anything funny, says the guards. Just keep moving along and there'll be no problem. Opening the door, we arrive into a large throne room, but the Emperor does not sit at his throne. Instead, we find two guards and another man in a long white lab coat. What can I do for you, he says. Who are you, we can ask. And he says, I am Ken Lee. I am the advisor to the Emperor of the Shi. I bring forth the wisdom of the Emperor. What is this place, we can ask? And he says, this is the steel palace of the emperor. This is the heart of Shetown. And where is the emperor, we can ask? And he says, the emperor remains hidden from prying eyes. As my job is to act as the emperor's screen, I cannot and will not tell you where he is. Well, what sort of research do you do here, we can ask? And he says, we do research that'll change the world. For more answers to your questions, you should seek out Dr. Wang Yi Tsi, which is annoying because Dr. Wang doesn't give us any answers to this question. What's the history of this place, we can ask? And he says, we were the survivors from the wreck of a submarine. When we ran aground, we stripped the metal from the submarine to create the palace. Some do not believe this. And we can imagine why, as this entire room is made from stone, not submarine metal. Perhaps this line exists because Interplay didn't want to create a new towel set of scrapped submarine parts? At any rate, we can say, hmm, it sounds almost as if you're berating someone. And he says, berating someone? Any fool who had done their research can see that the very basis of She-Town is the wreckage of the submarine. It seems fruitless to argue with those who would say there is no submarine. That's very even-tempered of you, we can say. And he says it certainly is. And I deal with these people on a daily basis. Alas! Look, I have some other questions. I am Oxhorn, we can say, and I'd like to see the Emperor. Not everyone is granted a chance to see the Emperor, says Ken Lee. You must first prove your worth. Are you willing to prove yours? Yes, we can say. And he says, excellent. This is what I require of you. There is a small military base north of here, called Navarro. There are numerous vertebrates there. We need plans and blueprints to manufacture some of our own. Fetch those, and you will be on your way to seeing the Emperor. You got it, we can say. And he says, once you have obtained the vertebrate plans, give them to Dr. Wang Yi Tsi. He will put them to good use. If we still have our vertebrate plans and we never gave them to the Habologists, we can go back to the chemistry lab and talk with Dr. Wong. You have certain schematics to give me, he says. And the chosen one can say, Ken Lee told me to give these to you. Speak to Ken Lee, says Wong, and he shall discuss what happens in your future. Thank you. We shall be able to verify some of our test data with these. Good day. Then going back to the Emperor's throne room and talking with Ken Lee, thank you for the vertebrate plans, Traveler, he says. What can I do for you? Can I see the Emperor now, we can ask? And he says, you must complete a second test. The Hambologists are our enemies. Their leader, AHS-9, has been abducting and brainwashing our children. Kill him for the good of the Shi, and I shall tell you how to speak to the Emperor. He's as good as dead, we can say. I am anxious to see the result of your attempt. Good day, he says. Oh, man. Now does she want us to kill the leader of the Habologists? 
Note that if we ask him about the fuel after having already diverted it to the homologists, he says, I wish I were able to offer you our fuel, but unfortunately our stores are empty. They have been diverted by some means to the homologists. It is possible that you would be able to find someone to divert it back, in which case we either have to work with Badger, if he's still alive, or Dave Handy, if he's not bugged, to steal the fuel from the homologists and send it to the oil tanker. If, however, we already gave the vertebrate plans to the hubologists, Ken here says, Our spies report that you have given the vertebrate plans to the hubologists. Steal them for us, and you shall be rewarded. We don't steal the plans by using our steal skill. Instead, we can do it one of two ways. If we told Vicky Goldman that Dave Handy was in love with her, and we then went back to Dave Handy and lied to him and told him that Vicky made fun of him, one of the ways Dave can get revenge on her is to make a copy of the vertebrate plants for us. We find an option to say, I need the vertebrate plants from your computer. And he says, there you go. Now get out of here. I'm gonna format the computer and leave. Or... If we saved Badger's girlfriend, one of the favors he can do for us is to give us the vertebrate plans. We ask him to hack into a computer for us, but instead of having him transfer fuel from the she, we ask him to hack the hubologists. Like stealing candy from a baby, he says, they'll never find me. What would you like from them? And we can say, can you get me a copy of their vertebrate plan? And Badger says, all right, check back with me in a day or so, and I'll let you know. One day later, when we return, he says, got the hubologists, no problem. Need anything else? Did you get what we needed, we can ask? Yeah, I got the Verdi plans, he says. Thanks a lot, we can say, see ya. Either way, we can take them back to Ken Lee and turn them in as if we never gave them to the hubologists to begin with. We get a similar quest that is resolved the same way if we chose to give the vertebrate plants to the she, but then later decided to work with the homologists. And we get a quest from them to steal the plans from the she. We resolve it the exact same way. Back in the Steel Palace and talking with Ken Lee, if we want to, we can admit to him that the homologists sent us here to kill the Emperor. The homologists have assigned me to kill the Emperor. And Ken Lee says, Have they really? Perhaps you would like to turn the tables on them. I can promise you our aid if you will agree to kill AHS-9. He's as good as dead, we can say. Excellent, says Ken Lee. I hope to hear of your success soon. We've got to make a choice. Do we kill the Shi Emperor for the Humbologists, or do we kill AHS-9 for the Shi? We'll start by killing the Emperor. There are two ways to get back there to see him without killing AHS-9 first. The easiest way is to have high karma, charisma, and intelligence. If we have high enough karma, charisma, and intelligence, even if we've already confessed that we were sent here to assassinate the Emperor, when we tell Ken Lee here that we are in need of fuel, and instead of asking us for the vertebrate plans, he says, You are certainly a worthy recipient of our fuel. I believe I can trust you with our secrets. In the back room, you will find that the force field to the large computer has been turned off. Enter the password cspdmshr she wang t x9372 and you will find yourself connected to the Emperor computer. The Emperor will be able to direct our fuel to where you need it. The Emperor is a computer? And Ken Lee says yes. It stores our history, our research and projects possibilities for the future. It is far better than any fallible human, yet we temper its suggestions with our own knowledge of human nature. I see, says the Chosen One. Well, thanks for your time. I have a village to rescue. This is a pretty difficult karma, intelligence, and charisma check. Even with high levels of each, we can still fail it. We may need to save before talking with Ken Lee and try a few times before we can pass it. If we can't pass this karma, intelligence, and charisma check, aside from assassinating AHS-9, the only way to visit the Emperor is to just walk through this back door. But if we choose this option, we find the force field enabled, and we have to disable it. There is a room at the end of the hallway here, but there's nothing in the bookcase or any of these containers. 
and if we use our repair skill on the force field, we can disable it without turning the nearby Shi guard hostile. In this room, we find the Emperor of the Shi, a computer, and we can access it. Greetings. Please enter your password to confirm your identity. If we didn't get the password from Ken Lee, and if we have enough science skill, we can simply hack into the computer. But if we got the password from Ken Lee, we find it at the top of the list. Shi Huang Zi, the name of their submarine. Either way, we gain access. And from here, we can do anything. If we choose geolocation, nothing seems to happen. We find a response that asks us, what do we want to locate? But our only option is back. It's supposed to give us the option to locate our missing tribes people, in which case it tells us that they're on the Enclave oil rig. But I couldn't figure out how to get it to give us this option. Perhaps it only appears if we haven't already learned where our tribes people are. But next up, we can go to diagnostics. Choosing a network scan, we find three different stations chemistry, biology, and physics. The chemistry station we have already activated and explored. This was the station inside the first lab that we could use to divert fuel to the tanker. From the Emperor of the Shi, we can do the same thing. We can access the chemistry station and divert fuel to the tanker. But from here, we can also learn more about the Shi. We can activate the biology station. Then we can access the biology station. Note that the biology and physics stations can't be accessed in any other way. These were the terminals that were inactive in the other labs. From the biology station, we can read about their botany program. After about 20 minutes, we discover this. Initial results of botanical radiation disruption prove unpromising. Dr. Shang develops radiation-resistant plant life. Unpleasant side effects follow. Resultant plant life deemed too dangerous. Shang insists on pursuing line and mixing it with genetic program. We can then read about the genetic program. After about 20 minutes, we piece together this information. Using the basics of the FEV virus, Dr. Long Wang is convinced of success in creating mutant soldiers. He creates a serum providing interesting results with rodent experiments. He injects himself and dissolves into a puddle of goo. Dr. Sheng disables line of inquiry. With the death of Dr. Long, Dr. Sheng is in charge. Sheng demands focus on radiation-consuming plant life. So somehow, the Shi of San Francisco got their hands on FEV. How? We have no idea. I doubt very much that they infiltrated the military base. After all, it had been occupied by the Master and a bunch of monsters for decades before the Vault Dweller destroyed it. Then it was only reopened by the Enclave after they excavated it. Perhaps it was some other stash of FEV. If this line on this computer is evidence that there were other stashes of FEV kept at other installations, this means that FEV could potentially be found anywhere in America where there were military governmental scientific installations like the Institute in Boston, West Tech in West Virginia, and a certain vault in the Capital Wasteland. Then we can read about their Xeno program, the subject on which we had hoped to establish a series of meaningful experiments has disappeared, presumed either destroyed or stolen by the Habologists. Further inquiries have proven fruitless. Until such a time as further specimens are obtained, this database will remain inoperative. Dr. Shang. Perhaps this Xeno program of the Shi can explain where the Wanamingos came from. After all, we learned that the Wanamingos in the Wanamingo mine were actually aliens. I think the connection between the Wanamingo mine and San Francisco are the Wanamingos that we find in the basement of the oil tanker. Both this alien specimen and their escaped FEV experiments must have gotten into the tanker, where they either reproduced or infected others, which is why we find the Wanamingos, the floaters, and the centaurs there. Backing out of the chemistry station, we can activate, then access the physics station. We'll start by reading Exploration. We are still preparing a working model of an aerial vehicle. None of the designs we have created have proven to be safe or aerodynamic. Perhaps if we had access to the plans of the ancients, dot, 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 Dr. Wong. In the next one, Theory, after wading through the introduction and the mathematics, we discover that the Xi are learning to develop nuclear power again. 
rebuilding the space travel theories of the ancients. And they mock the Hubologists while doing so, and harnessing the energy of the sun, wind, and sea. At least, that's what the notes read like. Next, we can back out of database to explore forecasting. Here, the Emperor makes a number of predictions. Tanker vagrants, 0% likely to clear creature infestation without outside assistance. Processing desirability of providing assistance. 15% chance of designated chosen one succeeding in task. Wow, the Emperor only had 15% chance on my success? I mean, I'm impressed that it even knows about my task. But man, I did hope for better odds than that. Chances of submarine reappearing in this game, 0%. What? First they're breaking the fourth wall, then they're talking about a submarine reappearing? It would have to appear first for it to reappear. Are they talking about the she submarine that was dismantled? Ugh. The Hubologist space launch is 95% likely to fail. Factors, no fuel, improper sealant, poor leadership, lack of initiative. Input, Poseidon oil tanker unfit for travel, require more input. Uh oh, does this mean that if we fuel the tanker, we won't be able to get it to move? Oh, great. Input indicates Enclave more powerful than previously believed. Do not approach. The Emperor has two more forecasts based on your character's choices. I couldn't get them because I'm not a child killer and my karma was too high. If your character's a child killer, one of the forecasts is the children of She-Town are in danger. 50% chance of Slayer moving among them. And if our character has too low karma, we get the forecast, Danger has come to She-Town. 75% probability of harm coming to residents. Finally, we can move back to Diagnostics and choose Check Hard Drive Integrity. The functional integrity of this system is 92%. The shielded core of the Emperor computer is 100%. The integrity of the data is 100%. The forecasting node is suffering minor power lags. Projected time to repair, six days. Forecast 15% operational. I suppose that explains why we were only able to get a few forecasts. Now the Hubologists told us to kill the Emperor. How do you kill a computer? Well, if we want to side with the Hubologists and kill the Emperor of the Xi, we can choose the option to format the hard drive. Format drive. All data will be lost. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure you wish to format this unit? This is an irreversible process. Yes. Formatting. Formatting. Formatting complete. Reboot requires full install. Shutting down. Shutting. Down. Complete. Now if we chose to kill the Emperor of the Xi by formatting the hard drive, or if we use the Emperor computer to transfer fuel without permission, then the guard in this room turns hostile. May the Buddha have mercy on your spirit. I'm sending you to the hell of burning metal. We now have to fight our way out of the Steel Palace killing every guard along the way. Incidentally, because the Hubologists don't know that the Shi Emperor is a computer, we can achieve this part of the quest by simply killing Ken Lee. Ah! After killing everyone in the Steel Palace, we can exit to Chinatown. But everyone in Chinatown turns hostile as well. We now have to find our way through Chinatown. If, at last, we make it back to the Hubologists, we can tell Harry that we got fuel for the shuttle. We have all we need for the journey now, he says. Excellent. Now we just await the word of AHS-9. And I'm sure he'll want you to come with us. Go get whatever you need done, and then come back and join us with the Starfather. See you then, we can say. All right, we're going to Quetzal. Heading downstairs, we can check in with AHS-7. Now that the ship is filled with fuel, he says, we await only the word of AHS-9, the great and terrible, to achieve liftoff. 
Then, moving all the way to his office, we can check in with AHS-9. Now, if we told Ken Lee that we would kill AHS-9, even if we then kill the Emperor and Ken Lee, when we arrive back at AHS-9, he says, Ah, uh, child, how could you stray from the path of truth like this? I see from your aura that you plan to kill me. I am bitterly disappointed. Bitterly. Ah, well, let us proceed. And with that, AHS-9 and the Habologists turn hostile, putting us in quite a pickle. But if we never agreed to kill AHS-9, and instead we killed the Emperor, or Ken Lee, when we arrive back, AHS-9 says, I can see by your emanations that you have succeeded in ridding the world of the polluting neurodynes of the Emperor. Yes, I have, we can say. Now I require your assistance in helping my people. You have killed the Emperor and destroyed his minions, says AHS-9. Yes, I have, we can say. Then there is no one who can stand in my way, he says. But I see no need to be beholden to a mere tool. Farewell, and good riddance. Oh, well, says the Chosen One. If that's the way it's got to be, so long. And after all of that, if we side with the Habologists, they betray us. We don't get the fuel for the tanker, and we don't get to ride on the ship to Quetzal. So instead, we can do as Ken Lee requested, and assassinate AHS-9. Now, AHS-9 is in the very back of the Habologists, and if we just kill him, we anger the entire compound. Or maybe that's what we want. Perhaps we want the experience. But if we want to get in there, assassinate the guy, and get out, the best way to do this is to perform the Shady Sands Shuffle. Activate three to four pieces of dynamite, set a nice long timer on it, minute and a half to two minutes or so, reverse pickpocket it onto his inventory, then hightail it out of there. Even if we're all the way on the other side of the compound, once the dynamite goes off and kills him, AHS-7 and the guards here turn hostile, but since we're next to the door, we can simply walk on out. Then, returning to the Shi, we can check in with Ken Lee. And he says, With the death of AHS-9, the great and terrible, the Habologists pose no real threat to us and our researches. Well done. You have my gratitude. Would you like to speak with the Emperor? Yes, we can say. He again tells us that the Emperor is a computer. If we choose to side with the Shi, not only when we head through this door do we find the barrier deactivated, but we can also access the computer, and as long as we don't format the hard drive, transfer the fuel to the tanker without the Shi turning hostile. Now it's time to prepare to face the Enclave. I went down to the Flying Dragon 8 to stock up on supplies when I noticed that Matt was not standing outside the Brotherhood of Steel bunker. We visited the other bunkers in the wastes, and the Brotherhood members assigned to those bunkers were still there. But Matt's gone. Where did he go? Heading inside the bunker, we can take the elevator downstairs. We don't see him down here. The barracks are all still empty. Well, maybe Ace knows where he went. Heading on over to the computer, we can ask him. What happened to Matt, we can ask. Loading sequence, says the computer. We can replay it now. We find Matt standing in the middle of the bunker, surrounded by the Enclave. You and your so-called president will not succeed, says Matt. Is that so? The Chosen One has come, and he will rid the world of your evil. I care nothing for your pathetic prophecies. Worse, you have become a nuisance through your meddling. That ends today. Killing me will stop nothing. That may be, but seeing your body rotting on the ground will bring a smile to my face. What do you think you're doing now? <laughs> You pathetic fool! <laughs> wow, I haven't laughed like that for a while. Anyway, get ready to die. Peep! Ah! Well, it's a little past 12. Anyone up for lunch? Score! I'm there! Yeah, count me in on that. 
The Enclave came here and killed Matt! Why? Did they know that we stole the vertebrate plans? If so, how did they know that we brought them here to the Brotherhood? And who is that guy? This is the second time we've seen him. He's also the guy that killed Gruthar and the Deathclaws in Vault 13. If he's fighting the Enclave's battles for them, we've got to get rid of them before anyone else dies. And now we can. We've got the tanker fuel, and we did it without losing any wealth or karma. We save Badger's life, we rid ourselves of the Habology menace, we get to keep all of our hardened power armor, and at last, we can head to the tanker and make our way to the Enclave. We'll pick up right here in my next episode. I publish many videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop, Enclave. Boast your support of the Enclave and everything they stand for with this brand new design. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.